Hello everyone and welcome to Space Quest 4, Roger Wilco and the Time Rippers, uh, with a Let's Play by Sierra Game Scott, and with is also known as Space Quest 12, Valhalla's Revenge 2. Uh, if you recall from last time, we've been sent into both the game and, I guess, uh, the, ti the game's timeline's future, um, or the series' future, I should say. Um, as we've mentioned before, this game is really a combination of a bunch of mock sequels and prequels. Alright, so um, we are here in uh, where this weird contraption has taken us, uh, where we saw the police officers come in, and we are going to take a look around this area. So let's go to the right first. There's not too much you can do on that screen. As you recall, we went to the landing gear, came out of that, and now we are um, uh, in, in the base. Okay, so, as you can see, there's a officer over here. You look briefly careful not to attract any attention. And, uh, let's see if we can open up. Oh. Uh-oh. Well, that didn't work out so well. Yes, as you can guess, uh, you are not supposed to go to that particular screen to start off. In fact, we will not get there until much later. So let's restore the game. And we are back in the landing area, or should be, yes. As you can see, nothing here is really all that important. It's the fueling unit, it's the ship itself. Um, Alright, so let's go over to the screen to the left and see if uh, perhaps that will work out a little bit better. And, whoa, what is this? It appears a ship has just sort of materialized. Two officers are talking to each other. I've just completed a scan of the Labian. Uh, well, no sign of a presence at this time. Alright. Well, now you can't actually read what they're saying, which is pretty much your tip to get in there quickly before they realize that you are trespassing. Now, this is an interesting little thing. Um, this is the, as it says, the dumb copy protection. Why they throw it in here? Why they make it. Well, I know why they make it so confusing. Uh, so you can't crack the, crack the code. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just pause the game here, and uh, we will be back when we are into the next screen. So, um, hold on for a second. Actually, I, let me just try to get us out of this, and that, instead of pausing, and the only reason I'm not doing that, I don't want to waste your time, obviously, um, is that I don't want to um, lose the synchronization between the sound and the video, which sometimes can happen with Cam Studio with which I am recording this, so it's just gonna, be, this last one is gonna fail it and then it'll let me restore. You can't restore or save here, obviously, because they don't want people to have unlimited chances to try to guess the code. Um, back when Sierra, this disc version games, uh, had these annoying little codes, which I guess did protect their intellectual property. Um, it probably was necessary since it's so easy to copy discs, and it wasn't so easy to copy CDs at least at the time, so the CD version actually does not have that. So let's restore, and we're not going to restore there, we're actually going to restore, which is uh, this, which will be the exact next scene, had I just entered in the correct copy protection, which I did um, off uh, video, uh, just to save some time, so I didn't have to look up the manual at the same time, because as you can see, it was pretty confusing. Alright, so what are we in now? We are in the in the pod, and if you get out of here, you die. Pretty much the same thing you just saw in the last scene, you get shot. Um, no big... Uh, nothing really interesting about that. This is where the game gets kind of cruel on us, and uh, I think some, some people who have remarked this is one of the more um, frustrating games, this is probably one of the worst parts. You see that uh, this code on the screen right here? I can't I'll, I can't really point to it, um, but on the top part in green letters, if you do not write that code down, uh, you will be restarting this game, at least from this point, had you saved it here, because you cannot complete the game. You have to use that code later on, um, uh, I think it's probably not too. Uh, uh, it's probably obvious enough that you need that code to get back here uh, towards the end of the game. As we mentioned, you had to go into the other room. So if you failed to write down the code, uh, that was one way this game really hosed you. Uh, another thing too is that you might think this is some more copy protection. That there's something in the manual or something you have to look up. No, you actually have to guess. As far as I know, guess um, the right code on this th on this thing. And if you don't guess, and um, I think you get unlimited chances but it's not immediately obvious. So there's about five different things you can do that might trigger um, the thing working. So let's try it. Uh, great. The first one is if you press the first signal six times, could um, randomly trigger uh, an appropriate event. Oops, oh, we want to get the screen filled. I wish it didn't 
automatically erase it when you get to the end. Alright, so if this takes too long, I will skip over it to save you some time. Alright, time and space belt under the football is a time rip, trans fletchers, and finally... Nothing much happens. That must not have been the valid code. Even this far into the future, controlled time travel has yet to be perfected. I always thought that was funny when I was a kid. I fortunately couldn't read it fast enough, but that it had this big build up and the music blares, <laughs> and then it just fails like that. So that's going to happen um, pretty much every time it doesn't work properly. So another thing you can try is the last symbol six times. And I think I'll try one more combination after this, and if that does not work, then I will uh, skip. I will spare you. The powerful quad quark, yeah, fluctuation, adrenaline, real hyperbolic hyperbole. And finally, 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 hey, that worked! Alright, excellent, well, I'm glad that happened. So, yes, we are headed to the next part. Um, depending on where we land, I'll have, well, let's just, uh, hold off. It should land us pretty soon, this doesn't take too terribly long. And let's see, alright, so the top part says, Space Quest 10, the Latex Babes of Estros. Um, a couple things. You can actually sometimes randomly land in Space Quest 3, um, which I forget what the name of that, of that game is off the top of my head. I apologize for that. But uh, whatever it is, uh, you do not want to, if you do that, you cannot get out. You have to go back um, using that code that you wrote down. Um, in order to, in order to pretty much continue with the game, if you get out of the time uh, uh, of the pod, you're going to be on that uh, magma planet, the lava planet from the Space Quest Three, and you will die immediately because you do not have the thermal underpants. All right, uh, another thing about this, let's let's get out of here. Um, if I can just click on that. Uh, well, there we go. Probably should save the game too. Yes. Alright, so Roger can get out of there, and as you can see, we're kind of on an old, uh, looks kind of like uh, the Grand Canyon, sort of. <clears throat> kind of resembles Earth. Kind of funny that Roger isn't necessarily on Xenon every time, even though he tra time travels from um, the same place, or... Actually, we were originally on Magnetheus, uh, let's call it 10, sorry about that. And then when he time travels, he's Xenon, and now we're probably not on Xenon. Maybe we are. Um, I don't think it ever explains it. Uh, one thing I mentioned is that this part is a little, um more PG than maybe some of the other aspects of, uh, of Sierra, or at least Space Quest, and pretty much if you're a person who is at all offended by something like a swimsuit edition um, of Sports Illustrated, uh, you may not like this, but I mean, it's, it's pretty tame, obviously, certainly by today's standards, but just in case anyone um, has any objections, because I know I mentioned on my profile that I try to keep everything family friendly. Um, this is the one part that might be slightly risque, but I don't think most people would have a huge problem with it. And we'll see what we can do here. So as you can see, this is just kind of, uh, like I said, with, with the Grand Canyon, kind of an outcropping. Also, you, one of the things you might notice, there was a person, kind of what looked like a person, a travel individual with a spear um, at the top. You, uh, you'll, we'll encounter those people in a little bit, and you'll kind of see more of what I'm talking about. So, um, there's actually not too much you do. Uh, this will be in this game, I guess, quote, Space Quest 10 for quite a while. Or not, well, well for a decent bad time. Um, but this particular area we're uh, in right now, that we won't spend too much time here, for the most part. And we were actually getting a little close to the end, so I'm sorry we had spent so much time playing around with uh, that that uh, space, um, uh, probably the, the time traveling pod. But unfortunately, that's the most confusing and aggravating portion of the game, I think. Though there, uh, there are a few other areas that are a little bit difficult too. So this is usually on top list of people's uh, harder adventure slash CR games. And I'm just pretty much walking around until an event triggers. And I don't know if it'll trigger by the time we end this video. Okay. Well, since we're getting close to time, 
let's uh, let's call it quits. I'll and I'll pick up with you when we actually trigger that event. Uh, so until next time, this is Sierra Game Scott. Uh, thank you for tuning in, and I'll talk to you later. Bye.